Okay, Itamak Sistiko, good day. It is a warm but overcast, very nice uh, Friday, May the 4th, 2018. International Star Wars Day, right? May the 4th. <laughs> kind of unfortunate what Disney's doing with Star Wars, though. I mean, um, Mahoney took me to the movies last night as part of my birthday celebrations. I went to go see the, the new Avengers movie and they showed a, uh, a preview for Solo. It's coming out later this month and man I, I think that's probably going to be the first Star Wars movie ever that I didn't bother to go see in the movie because <laughs> it just looks like I, it's going to make me mad so I'm, I might not go see it. I, I don't know I'm still debating. Anyway while I was in the movie theater last night we got our first rattlesnake call of the season. And uh, it wasn't actually a call to the hotline. Um, somebody had sent me a message over the Facebook page, Rattlesnake Select Bridge Facebook page. Folks, um, please, if you need to report a rattlesnake get, that's having an emergency or there's, you know, there's an emergency situation that you want to get a hold of me right away, please use the, the city's hotline to do that because I I don't necessarily always check my Facebook and um, I was just lucky that I caught that one so I, I walked out to use the washroom and I just kind of quickly glanced at my messages and stuff and um, I had this snake call so what I was able to do was get a hold of Sherry Merchant uh, with the with the city uh, who helps me up with rattlesnakes and she went over and picked up the snake unfortunately it was down in Popson Park uh, on the road down there and it had been hit by a vehicle. Um, Sherry took it home with her because she thought maybe, you know, some possible chance I could help it. It was in pretty pretty rough shape. Um, she knew before I got there that the, the thing was not going to make it, but uh, she waited for me to get there and I, after the show, and I ended up dispatching the snake. Um, Surprisingly, even though it was a mature snake, it wasn't one that we've come across in the last five years of um, this project anyway. So, but there's still a lot of snakes out there that I have yet to encounter, I believe. In any case, that was our first snake of the season. And right now, I am headed down to Paradise, Paradise Canyon Golf Club, to pick up our second snake of the season. Um, so we'll see... We'll see what it is there. Usually those guys that, well, I know they, they'll, uh, they've already grabbed it. Uh, they have a pair of tongs down there. Um, nice professional tongs and a bucket. So they grab it, they put it in the bucket, and then I come and uh, take it away. So the golf course is the only one that, that does that at this point, though I'm hoping at some point to train the university uh, security to do that as well. In any case, let's go see what they got.
Flower, come here, flower. Oh, oh, little girl, little girl. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Cute little Chihuahua pup. This is my sister-in-law's dog, and we are babysitting for the weekend. So, and no chewing on the computer cords, flower. Come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Too cute. So, obviously back home from the coolies, um, but what you saw in that snake release was basically whenever I let go a snake, um, I take a, a picture of it in the bucket in the container that I'm using. Um, or if I can't take a good picture in there, I'll put, I'll put it on the ground and take a picture of it. But I want to get a, a good picture where I can see the distinct pattern designs that, of individual snakes on their back. Um, the, the pattern breaks, usually, is what I'm looking for. But in this particular snake, who I think was a female, um, her colorations were female. Although her tail after the cloaca looked a little long, more, more like a male's. So... Sex is indeterminate, but what was interesting was her patterning. It was so even without pattern breaks, and that's pretty unique. I've only encountered a, a couple of snakes in the last five years that had that, that kind of trait. And looking with this one, um, since her patterning is so even all the way down her back, what I, what I used for identification or what I looked at for her was the the real details of the patterns around her head which are pretty unique um, and then right as it gets toward her tail end um, some of the some of the lines on her back kind of narrow down to the right hand side become more more pointed and, um, it's a little bit characteristic uh, something that I can use for identification. So I ran that against the photo database this afternoon um, and of course there's very few snakes that have that that pattern without breaks um, like I say. So looking at those snakes there's only one that potentially could be the the same snake that I picked up this afternoon and that is a snake that I picked up from the community gardens at the University of Lethbridge on August 13th of last year and interestingly ironically that's the same snake who bit herself while I was transporting her in the bucket from the university to the north end of Riverstone and really that that's a, a kind of a event that catalyzed the uh, the project <laughs> that I'm campaigning for right now to build a rattlesnake transportation um, case that's going to be unparalleled comfort for the snakes. Um, so yeah, I found it interesting that this could be the same snake. It's not definitive because uh, unfortunately the one who bit herself last year, I didn't want to harass her too much in the bucket when I was releasing her because I thought that she might be actually aborting um, fetuses because it's that time of year when they'd start be giving birth. And I've seen snakes who've aborted fetuses near the rookeries before because of stress. And I just imagined that being in the bucket was stressing her out so much that, that that's why she was bleeding. Um, so when I released her, that's what I had in mind of what was happening with her. But when I came home and studied the video footage from inside the, the bucket, she clearly bit herself. Um, and that made me realize that we need a different kind of transportation system. So, um, but in any case, when I went to release her, I didn't want to stress her out any further than I already had. 
So I didn't make her open up for me for the best photograph. The photograph that I got, you can see that she has that even, unbreaking, consistent patterning that's so rare. But I can't see what the, the real unique stuff on the very top of her head or down toward her tail that I was looking for as, um, as a match. So um, this could be the same snake. It's definitely not unusual for snakes from Riverstone to travel to the Paradise Golf Club, which is right next door. Um, but I'm not sure. <laughs> and if it was the same snake, I've further removed her <laughs> and brought her to a completely different uh, area of the coulee than the North River Stone. So this is the problem with not being able to identify the snakes like right in the field, right there, bang, um, to know where I'd encountered them before. But in any case, we'll find out in the future probably, maybe, uh, whether the two snakes were the same or not. In any case, pretty cool day, start of the snake season, and unless I get another call tonight, that's a wrap. <laughs>